Good afternoon, class. Right, um, I'll pick up another example from the CAT paper, and I'm going to use this to discuss what we have covered in the F8 in your chapter 2, Code of Ethics. Alright, so like before, the question comes from CAT level. It means we're expecting that the marks allocated over here would be quite generous in the sense that they will actually make up another example even though requirements are not that tough. Right, the first part they say here, now comment on the above statement ensuring that you would ensuring that you include an explanation of the term professional objectivity. So you are supposed to comment and then you must explain the term professional objectivity and you should include a commentary on the validity of that statement. So what statement is that marks that is the dependence of a professional accountant when you're in an assurance engagement. Okay, so that we're gonna start dealing with this, then I'm gonna move on to the case study. Yeah. Alright, so first of all, now I'm just gonna cover the points for this part. Okay, so my concern is on the section B where we look at a case study. Alright, so the first thing they're asking over here is for us to actually make a comment of that statement, including explaining what is professional and international objectivity. So, professional objectivity will be the first thing that you're going to cover over here. Now, what is objectivity? Okay, so first we recall what you study. Now, class, do you remember COP, COP, COP is police, COP, IP. So what is the O over here? It's about objectivity. So what is objectivity? Now, you, you should probably start by addressing the issue to say that Objectivity is one of the fundamental principles expected of a professional accountant. So what do you mean by objectivity then? So it's not just telling them that there's this fundamental principle. So what is objectivity? So objectivity is about, right? So you bring in all those key words that we had before to explain the meaning. So objectivity is about what? It's about being impartial, it's about being fair, it's about avoiding conflict of interest. So these are those things that we have here about objectivity, right? So objectivity is about impartial, okay? It's about avoiding being biased. It's about preventing any undue influence or conflict of interest to override the professional judgment of a professional accountant. So that's the value of what we say objectivity. So then what is this objectivity that we say here in the context of an auditor? Now, so you must apply to auditor's objectivity. Now, as an auditor, He 
expresses an audit opinion over financial statements. Now this opinion intends to enhance credibility of the financial statement. And that opinion itself shall be credible. So whatever that we say over here, we believe that users must be able to have trust to believe in us. So the credibility is very important. So another question is, how, how do you give this credibility to that user? Okay. For that, the auditor's objectivity shall be beyond question. So what we say over here is the requirement that we must have the degree of objectivity that users must not have doubts over it. So they will have no questions about you being not objective. They will believe that you're an impartial person. So this is what we need over here. So now the question is, how do you have an objectivity that's beyond question? Okay. So this created requirements for auditor to be and appear to be independence of those influences that could override his professional judgment. So now we see that there's actually two requirements of being and appear to be. And that's exactly what you learn, the issue about being independent, having independence of mind, and then having independence of appearance. Agree? So this is the independence of mind, and that's the independence of appearance. So this will exactly fall back into what the question is trying to ask. They say that do you agree that when you have objectivity, you do not need to be seen independent? Which of course the answer is no. Because independence of mind, it's your quality that is inside you, which people will not be able to see. So in order for you to convince that you're still independent, you're still objective, you must appear to be. So it's actually two different things, you see. So over here, being independent is about preserving independence of mind. which is about your capability to maintain your professional objectivity while exercising professional judgment. And what is this important of? This is important for quality, okay? And this it's important to preserve quality of auditor's judgment.
while appearing independent is about preserving the independence of appearance which is how the public or the user perceive or deter as being objective and their perception is very important for them to develop confidence they have in what you say so if you just have independence of mind yes you, you can have the quality but there will be no point because the people will not believe what you say and by just appearing independent is not enough because it's no point with all these people believing in you but you do not have quality in your work so that's why we need both you see so that's why in this case we believe that appearing is important to get users confidence over auditors judgment or opinion okay so this is about auditors objectivity so what about the validity of the statement well if that's the case i would not agree with that statement okay so since they're asking you to give a commentary of the validity so i would say that the statement is invalid okay so the statement is invalid the statement ignores the importance of independent of appearance when in any assurance engagement both independence of mind and appearance shall exist all right all right so this is a small part of it at the beginning discussing about objectivity all right so what we're going to see here is actually on the case study so this is what i'm more interested in okay all right so what they actually want us to do over here it's quite common even in the f8 level this is normally what we know what we normally see in the exam that the examiner will actually write cases with scenarios and ask you to comment now over here they say for each of this scenario you should actually comment on your concern that you might have regarding the threat to your independence so what concerns you so what what are the threats that you see here in the case but the usual steps that we're gonna do is the same we will talk about the threats we're gonna identify the threats and we're gonna explain why is it a problem so it, it's concerning you so why it concerns you all right then they also ask that recommend an appropriate action to be taken to safeguard against any threats identified okay all right so you're gonna read this first they say there is a say, rules of professional conduct describe various situations and relationship which if existing would pose a threat to auditor independent now the guidance note provides examples of appropriate actions that can be taken to safeguard against the loss of independence where such situations and relationships exist so the recent training seminar the following scenarios were presented for discussion so first of all it says 
From 20th of May 2004, the audit partner of Point visited offices of Guy Clubs, a limited liability company, to plan the final audit procedures for year ending 31st July 2004. Right, a week later, each of the five partners of Point received an unsolicited letter from the managing directors of Guy Club offering one year free membership at one of the company's golf and country clubs with effect from 1st August 2004. Now the annual membership would cost 3000 and this offer was not made to anyone else. Alright, so it's quite obvious we, we're talking about gift. Okay, so it's issue about gift. Right, so for the first case, uh, we're talking about point and key clubs. So what's the issue? What's the issue? Now the issue is they, they've offered the partners. Okay, so we can see that all partners of point have been offered free memberships at G Clubs, which is an audit client of Point. Sorry, it's P O Y. Okay, so it's just an audit client of Point. Okay, now. This is a form of gift and it would create. Now normally the, the issues of gift can give rise to a couple of threats which include we say self-interest because it's like a form of bribery there's a gain element in it when you receive the so-called the free membership. Now we might also look at familiarity threat because it might create a perception to people that you actually have very close relationship that you've been offered this kind of benefit by a client. And of course, uh, we're also concerned of intimidation threats so in which way that the intimidation threats could occur well because um, client can always use this as a basis of threatening to disclose the fact that you received the gift so that they will actually use this to pressure you for the, the kind of good opinion that they, they hope for okay right so this is the issue so this is what we've identified. So what concern is now accepting gift, which is a form of gain, is like a form of bribery where Partners can be accused for exchanging favor with the acceptance of such gift. So that's why usually we do not allow acceptance of gift un unless the value is modest, you see, okay? Which of course, in this case, you can see that they mentioned the membership costs 3,000 and there's about five members, it's about 15,000. So we do not see any point that the value can actually be modest, okay? Let's just go on and explain, okay? Now, the, we, we also look at the issue that the audit has just commenced and all partners in point 
are offered such gift so this will actually point us to the motive of what exactly they're trying to do so why is it at such an initial stage that they actually make an offer to you okay so so is this actually really an indication that they're expecting their acceptance of gift is an exchange of favor towards the later stage of the audit so that that really concerns us okay so if that's the case this created concern regarding the motive of the gift so for instance that probably the directors of D club might pressure their engagement partner for a favorable opinion okay so we, we do not know uh, okay so th this could be one of the issues that we see here now it can further strengthen the intimidation threats With the directors of G Club can threaten to disclose their acceptance of the gift when the partners of point refuse. to agree with the request all right so the some of the issues that we see here so basically we've identified the threats we've discussed the issue and you're supposed to recommend an action okay now so what we're going to say here is the rule so the ACCA's rules prohibit acceptance of gift from the assurance client unless the value is modest and of course you have you do have to identify the value if not what why must the question say that is three thousand right so in this case uh, cost of 3,000 per member for all the five partners would not be modest and, and it's a very big issue here in the sense that they've not made this kind of offer to anyone else so it's not part of the norm for them to do this kind of thing okay so if that's the case it become a very different situation that is only made to the partner and the value is not small okay so what you must do so the offer shall be politely declined but that's all you can do there's nothing much you can do here so you just have to reject okay all right so it's the first case to do it point all right we're going to see the second issue over here all right class it says that the wife of one of the audit managers at Paburi, which is a large audit firm and it's the auditors of Adeline a limited liability company is 
been recently been appointed as the finance director of Adelaide. So we're talking about issues concerning familiarity threats because of the connectedness that the managers of the audit firm, the wife is actually the finance director of the audit client. For immediately prior to her appointment, she had been employed by one of Adeline's competitors. And each of the directors of Adlin is entitled to an annual bonus that's based on the reported profits of the company. Alright, so it's probably an issue on the bonus and they did mention that it's actually employed by Adlin's competitors. Alright, so what we're going to discuss here about the issue. Okay, see, first of all, this issue of independence and there bound to be some kind of conflict of interest because of uh, prior employment with Adeline's competitors. Okay, so first of all, now the wife of the audit manager engaged to the audit of Adeline has been appointed as the finance director of Adeline. And this creates form of familiarity threats as well as self-interest threats arising from the close relationship. Now usually when we have threats to do with relationship, the significance of the threats, we have to evaluate the significance of the relationship. Okay, So in this case, uh, in this case, the relationships involve husband wife which is a close immediate family relationship and the capacity involved where one is the audit manager while the other as finance director can be significant so why is it significant now because they are both at a very senior position that they're capable of affecting the outcome of the financial statement and the outcome of the audit so they are both senior enough to influence the outcome of the financial statement and the audit. Right, so now the the issue is the fact that because it's an annual bonus that the wife is entitled to based on the profit, okay? So a further concern
increasing the threat to auditors' objectivity is the the wife of the audit manager is to be given a bonus based on the reported profit of the company. So you just have to make an imagination that if the finance director, which is the wife, is keen of overstating the profit because the wife is eyeing for the bonus and of course the husband could be in a position of helping because since that's the wife and of course probably the husband might also be influenced of the financial gain so this is where the threat is actually being created okay so the issues that the audit manager could be tempted or even obliged to assist his wife to overlook any overstatement in the company's profit. Okay, so that, that's the concern that we're going to have here. So again, with this concern, what kind of safeguard that we're looking at? Now, the safeguard is pretty easy. Since the, 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 the manager is affected, so we should just remove the manager. Okay, so what we're supposed to do is the audit manager shall be removed from the audit engagement of Adeline. Now in fact, if there is a need, we should actually inform the client that there's this kind of threat. Okay? We, we can't just assume that the client is aware, so we do not know whether that the wife is actually disclosed to the company. Okay? So you probably should just, just inform them that there's this threat and this is what's going to happen. Okay? Now, so the directors of Adlin should be informed this issue and whatever actions that we've taken to safeguard the threats right so this is the more obvious things of what we're going to do to deal with this problem okay all right now the last issue that we're going to see here class now they say that bolis is a long established firm auditing the financial statements of two private limited liabilities company owned by thomas an entry pioneer with a very dominant personality. The annual total fee will actually be 830,000 for the firm and the combined audit fees attributable to the two companies is 72,000. Probably when you look at the figures immediately what crosses your mind is the, the limit, the percentage of the audit fee or we say the recurring fee over the annual fee of the firm and now it represents about 8.7 percent okay <coughs> now thomas has recently approached Bolly with a view of appointing them as auditors to a third company under his control and the projected annual fee of this third company will actually be eighty thousand. okay all right so what's the issues that we're going to see here now to do with police Bolis and Thomas. 
Right, the issues concerns with getting too much income from one client. Okay, so Thomas has engaged Bolis to audit companies. Owned by him. Thus creating a huge level of income from Thomas to police. See at present the levels of income at present with two companies engaged to police, the percentage of the audit fee is, as we calculated earlier, 8.7%. police annual income now however accepting the third engagement would increase this limit so let's see so if you add another 80 plus 72 So we're going to have 152 and of course your level of income will increase to 910. So 152, if you add on with that 80, the total income will increase to 910. So 152 with 910 will increase to 16.7%. And what's the rule that's set by ACCA? Now, ACCA believe that undue dependence over an audit client can create self-interest threat to auditors objectivity and what is that undue dependent is about significant fees that you get from your client okay and ACCA is defined that any recurring fee from an audit client that is not public listed or interest exceeding 15% of the practice income as significant putting auditors objectivity into jeopardy so this is basically the rule set by ACCA that of course is part of the revisions. If you still recall that if your client is public listed or public interest that the rate should actually reduce to 10% of your income. So in this case we're accepting the third client will actually put us above the limit. So there's actually a violation of the rule. So if that's the case it's a safeguard. So as a safeguard of the firm's objectivity, it is best not to accept the third engagement. All right.
Okay, so again, I hope that this will help you to revise a bit on your chapter two. Okay, so I'll distribute the question paper in the class. So I hope that you can run through this, and then you, you're going to see the style of how we're going to answer this kind of question. Okay, right. Thank you very much, class.